Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of History After Hours. My name is Kevin Pumphrey, and with me, like normal, is Mr. Ron Franklin. This is a very special podcast because it is a European podcast. We recorded this, I believe, on March 22nd, something like that, 2022, in a hotel in Florence, Italy, after touring Rome and another small town called Orvieto. Um, And this podcast, we're letting basically the students who went with us on this trip during spring break kind of reflect on what they saw. For most of them, nearly all of them, they haven't traveled to Europe and they haven't seen these sites. So we were very interested to get their take on their experience, on what they had seen so far. We planned on recording other podcasts uh, in our trip, but it just it was difficult to fit in the time. We went ahead after this podcast and we toured Greece as well. So with all that being said, we hope you enjoy this special podcast. All right, here we are in Florence, Italy. This is another podcast from another country. Uh, I think we've done this maybe a handful of times. Yeah, a couple. It is Today is Thursday. Nope, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday, March 22nd. We've sort of lost track of the days already. I mean, it's, it happens that quick, you know. Of course, we traveled for nearly, what, a day coming out of the United States, flying into, flew into Amsterdam, then down to Rome. Yes, and we've had a great time in Rome, and now we've made, this is the first night in Florence, we haven't done anything here yet, so this podcast is going to be looking at what we've done so far. How many kids have we brought with us? About 40-ish? Yes, a total of 43 humans and, you know, maybe 36 kids, 35 students, something like that. Yeah. And we have three students with us right here. They are staring at us with the, <laughs> a uh, blank look on their face, waiting for well, their ti- turn. They're tired. We've had we a are. long day. It's what, what time is it right now? Here. I don't know. I thought it was Thursday, but... Yeah. <laughs> what time? Yep. 9.39. Get into the mic so I can hear 9:39. you. 9.39. 9.39, which means it's probably about 3.39. 3.30 at home, right? So uh, that's it's been kind of weird to converse back and forth. Have you guys t- talked to people at home yeah, yet? Yeah, I've kind of like gotten a routine now. So like once it turns um, like 6 o'clock here, I'll start talking to my family because, you know, it's noon in Hot mm-hmm. Springs. And so it's a reasonable time to start yeah. calling and texting and stuff. All right. So let's, let's do this before we get any further. All right. For the record, state your name. Then, uh, my name is Evan Myers. My name is Roman Lancaster, and I'm Joshua Weed. All right, excellent. So, three good choices to be on the podcast. I got a great feeling. You guys been having a good time so far, though. Yes, absolutely. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about the trip quickly. Like just the travel over. Anything that was how how'd you handle that? You know, was there anything surprising uh, there? It kind of uh, you definitely lost track of time. Um, we arrived at the airport at eight and. Within the next 24 hours, a little past 24 hours, we were in Italy, but it felt like almost a week. It, it was exhausting <laughs> the mentally travel day, and physically. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like a time warp in a weird way, yeah. I, fe- I feel like we had Sunday stolen. Like, uh, Sunday didn't yeah. exist. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, I've never truly experienced jet lag, and I can say <laughs> I truly experienced jet <laughs> it's lag. It's a real thing. Boy. Oh, yeah. I, it, yeah. It's, it's extreme. <laughs> Melatonin's a savior. <laughs> All right, we've been joined by another student, too. Go ahead and say your name out here so we know for the record. Hello, I'm Liam Jeffers, and I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's been a it's been a great day. We've packed a lot in. That's one of the that's one of the things about this trip. And I was speaking with one of the adults earlier, and I was like, you know, one of the upsides is we do so much. Mm-hmm. One of the downsides is we do so much. Yeah. And then so this morning, think about where we started and where we are now. It's a it can be a blur. And even though a lot of times we document that with you know you get your phones or whatever, and shuck, 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 some, some, I've seen some kids with like more professional looking cameras. And if you if you don't go back and review that, you know, and maybe tag some of them, like you may just forget where that was and what that was. So go ahead, and make sure. My you mom's do that. already asked me if we went to see something, forgot what it was. I'm I'm sure I saw it. <laughs> I think. Well, I mean, like halfway through the day, the day today, I had to like turn to my friends and ask, like, is this Tuesday or is this like, are we almost, are we going home today? Yeah. It, it feels like we've already been here for a week, if not more. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. In ways, it's kind of nice to be to lose track of time, to not have to worry about what day it is, just to go with the flow. But obviously, being in school, like all of us are, that's not a luxury we usually have. We usually know exactly what day. 
because we have homework due and we've got to get something. But this has been, it's it's kind of nice sometimes to kind of have that blurred away. All right, so let's talk about before the trip. Like, what kind of expectations did you have going in? And uh, then maybe talk about whether or not those expectations have been met or exceeded or what. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I didn't even know if I was going to be able to go on the trip <laughs> because I had a lot of problems beforehand and it was a bit stressful. So I didn't really have a lot of time to even think about what the trip was going to be like because my most, you know, the thing I was stressing about was whether I was able to, you know, do it. Mm-hmm. But I did, which is great. Um, but I basically had some thoughts. Um, I was not expecting it really to just be so, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this. Um, well, of course, we've been able to have some free time, but um, I feel like things are only now starting to slow down a yeah. bit. It, it can be hectic, yeah, yeah, especially in the big city. Like, we started in Rome, so that's that's a lot going on. But it's fine. I think it, it might have come down to I had some technic, you know, uh, problems in the beginning, so I think that was just added, added stressors. Yeah. And, of course, I joined the thing late, so... Uh, I I only just slipped into the trip. So, but you're feeling better though. I'm Things feeling are a to... lot better. Yeah. Okay. But, um. Yeah. But it's been really fun. Excellent. All right. Somebody else, give me some thoughts. Uh, my entire expectations of Italy as a whole were based on two different movies. Uh, one of them being uh, the second Spider-Man of like the newest, you know, with Tom Holland, you know, okay, Spider-Man: yeah. Far From Home, where they're fighting with Mysterio and all that. I thought I, I uh, that was my grand uh, vision of Rome. Uh, or which, entail, which entails what? Because I haven't seen the movie. Uh, it's based oh, they're in Venice. In Venice. Um, okay. And so I kind of expected all of Italy to kind of look similar to that. <laughs> okay. Um, but then place, the yeah. second movie that I based it off of uh, is the newish kind of uh, Disney movie, Luca. It's like a very okay. small kind yeah, of port Luca. town. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess have seen that. Puerto, Puerto Russo, mm. uh, I guess, is the place. Um, I don't know. But that, that's also kind of what I was thinking whenever we were coming here. So, so you land in Rome and you go... I land in Rome and it looks like New York City in a way. And I was very shocked. There's, you know, there's trash everywhere. And of course, I'm saying this, it's a beautiful place and there's lots of beautiful things. But there is a definitely a shock value when you arrive there. It's a big there. city. It is a big city with lots of people who are not always the nicest. Um, and it's not always the cleanest. And one of the, one of the craziest things that I noticed, so much graffiti everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just every, I, I've been to New York and there's graffiti there, but... Here is just is literally every building just plastered. It's like it's like as if they painted the building with graffiti. It's amazing. I'd been told by people on the EF tours before there'd be no free time. It's you do exactly what they say when you say it. So I've been very pleased to be able to have free time to go do what I want as long as I'm back to where we're supposed to be within the time frame. Mm-hmm. I like the freedom that they're entrusting with us to go into a foreign city, into a foreign country and just have fun. Sometimes it depends on the trip we're taking and what the itineraries have uh, have uh, already sort of planned out. But we've been fortunate this time to have some time where you guys could kind of just you know, get in groups and go here and go there and kind of look around and see what you can see. That's that's been a that's a nice part of this trip so far. So that's good. Well, I'm glad that that's exceeded what you thought was going to happen then. You know, I've never truly visited a like beautiful country, a foreign country such as Italy, but uh, it's good to see some jokes come true because my name is Roman. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, you're from Rome. I'm like, what? What are you saying? Like, what do you? I don't understand. <laughs> but you know, actually coming to Rome, it's crazy. It's crazy to see. I mean, I am named after the Romans, so it's it's like really sick just to see everything, mm-hmm. everything. All the jokes are coming to life, and they're <laughs> amazing. Well, okay, so what uh, what expectations did you have coming in? You know, I I've only been to a foreign country once, and that was Jamaica, and I did not go to the best parts of Jamaica. I was not not there for a stay, like a stay, uh, a vacation. But um, expecting for Italy, I was expecting it to be. I mean, I my expect expectations have been met. It's it's as beautiful as I expected, and I'm really happy we went to these small towns because mm-hmm. this is this is what I this is what I really wanted to see some authentic Italy, not some tourist Italy. Right, and. And it is very different once you get outside the city. You know, to Evan's point about it's it's a big city. It's a, actually it's a I don't think it's not considered a mega city. You know, I don't know where the dividing line is there, but maybe ten million is a mega city. Is that how that works? I don't know. Yeah, it's a pretty dense population. But it's really yeah. So it's really especially when you had tourists. Um, and I've customized these trips before, where I built in free times because I've learned lessons over the years. But after COVID just to be back on the tour, I was kind of let them decide what we did because I knew there'd be new restrictions. Obviously we should all be on one bus, but we're broken into two buses, which is another wrinkle. The masks are of course a pain that we have to constantly remind ourselves to put them on, take them off. Um, the, the cards, the vaccine cards, that's different. So there's been a lot more wrinkles to this for me 
but it's still, you know, somebody. Hey, but we're still me. here, man. Yeah, I mean, I never <laughs> get tired of. I should never complain about being in Rome, no matter how many times I've been here, and and even me, I've been. This is my eighth t- time, I guess, probably to Rome. I've seen new things. I mean, they've taken me like that. We just saw another replica of the David that's bronze here in Florence that they've never taken me to and overlooks the city of Florence. So I didn't know that existed until a couple hours ago. So there's always new experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to travel. And and obviously you guys can feel getting out of your comfort zone, being exhausted, but pushing through, oh, this is different. How little is this cup or whatever, you know, the gelato or whatever. So we, we can talk about some of the cultural things, but maybe for organization's sake, we should just take this one at a time. Here. Yes, all right. So first first day in Rome, think about some of the things that you saw, what you, or just, let's just do Rome cumulatively then, both both days that we did. So what stood out to you, and um, I mean, really, that's, let me just do that. What stood out to you and why? Definitely the lack of enforcement of the no picture policy in the Sistine Chapel. Well, There's some lady with a professional camera just picturing the whole thing with the guard next they, to her they had i don't know what was going on with that lady but they normally just run people down I, i've seen them snatch up people's phones and cameras before i don't know she may, i don't know how she maybe she's somebody's mama she got away with it, i don't know hmm, that is interesting because i saw them really get on to a bunch of people mm, yeah. so i guess they're picking and choosing uh i think one of the coolest things we saw in rome was uh last night after we finished eating uh when we just we decided to go back to the pantheon because we didn't get to fully visit it the first day um, and we just happened to stumble upon some kind of crazy visual musical kind of performance. That yeah, they they had an ensemble that up there too. Cool. It was like a full orchestration. Yeah, yeah. Did you get up close to the stage? Oh yeah, I recorded like fifteen minutes of it. Yeah. Um, but and then some light show. On yeah, he the, had like a projector that was shining onto the Pantheon with different moving shapes and things as he played whatever music he was playing. It was just really kind of a. a crazy thing to just encounter as you're walking because we did not expect that as all at that's, all that's the first time we've seen something like that normally in front of the pantheon there's someone performing but not we've never seen anything to that scale there we've seen a guy with a violin and we've seen a guy with a guitar and we've seen uh yeah your street performers yeah right entertainers but uh, nothing, that was a full production uh, of a big story. deal yeah there's someone who's probably filming that yeah so. yeah i think they had like a professional film crew that were up in the air uh what about uh art and architecture or anything else that kind of comes to mind you just pass that around. Yep. Yeah. Um, first off, you have to sort of count in for the fact that, you know, for the first day or two, you're normally hazed and, you know, jet lag and everything. And also it's just sort of a surreal experience um, because it's like, well, I'm in Italy. What is happening? Um, but there, there was a couple of times where there was like these moments that sort of both grounded me and sort of reminded me where I was, but also, uh, you know, put me through that experience of just like that jaw drop. Um, And I I think the most major one had to be um, St. Peter's Basilica. That Mm -hmm. was... Inside, uh, outside, both? um, The outside is beautiful, but I'm going to be honest, the jaw drop moment happens when you walk in and you just... It's insane. You guys got... Well, now, I wasn't with you when you went in. Uh, so, did you... What did you think of the Pieta? Um, it, it was a surprise. Um, this is something that I talked to my friend about. Um, it, 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 I had the same experience in another church. I'm forgetting the name. It's slipping my mind right now. But um, it, it's... It, there's a whole different... I like the different purpose. Because in a museum, they show off these art pieces almost like front and center... Right, and then you go to the you know the church, and you have to look right. And sure, it is the first thing you see when you look right, but it's almost small. It's in the distance, and the only thing, the only way you can sort of see where it is is you see this big crowd, and then it, you it draws you near it. And it's just it's sort of more of a tactile experience. And I think I like that. It's sort of it gives you it's it's a different experience than just being like oh yeah you know oh excuse me where is this in the museum oh okay let me just mm-hmm. go over there it's um i i like experiences where i don't know i kind of like the theme that you're on here so let's do let's do picture it out ponder it jaw drop moments i just like the way you phrase that okay, okay? and we've had some other students join us too so that you guys can jump in as well so definitely walking through the roman forum today I remember yeah. the picture you showed us during the actual lesson. Uh-huh. And I went, hmm, this is exactly where this person should have taken a picture. <laughs> and because I like, I like all things Greek and Roman, I was walking through and I'm like, hmm, that's that thing that's 2,000 years old, majorly important, just sitting here. 
Um, as as we came out of the Coliseum and we went down the hill, like, when, when did you have that moment? When we went up the hill, right as we got to uh, the Arch Titus. Uh-huh. When I walked to the right of that, I went, holy crap, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> when the whole thing sort of unfolds mm-hmm. in front of you. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful shot. And the thing that, bo- that I should say bothers me, the thing that makes me, I think I said this to a couple of different students, makes me happy and sad at the same time, is I'm happy to be here. And I'm, I'm glad that there's at least some of it left. But there's also that sadness where I'm like, wow, th- I wish there was more left. You know, so we have to we have to really kind of work to visualize some of it, but the but what is left is still enough to give you that imagination of uh, or, or the imagery of what's glorious about the ancient forum. So, like the uh, the Senate building, I thought it was just some other building, and the lady was like, "Yeah, the Senate was in there." I was like, <laughs> "Hmm, I thought it was an apartment building." <laughs> yeah, jaw drop, jaw drop moments. Just packs that around. I don't know what this area was called, but it was the kind of the outside main area of the Vatican City. Uh, kind of, oh, in, in front of the St. Peter's Basilica? Yes, yeah, so, so St. Peter's Square. Square. Okay, St. Mm-hmm. Peter's Square. Uh-huh. Yeah, I when I walked there, I was like, was this like, how? this is this is insane. Like, I didn't know it was built for that many people to like, could that even fill up? Could people fill the streets there? Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. It was, ex- it was for Easter services and things like mm-hmm. that. They, you know, he'll come out to the window and. Yeah, or some. I guess sometimes he comes down, but oftentimes he's in the he's in the window up there in the upper. Is it the right hand side? I can't. I'm trying to visualize yeah, it's it. It's yeah. second window from the top floor, right hand side. It's yeah. a small little undecorated window that the uh, the papal apartments, papal apartments, which he actually doesn't live there now. The new pope, he decided to live somewhere else. But yeah, he'll come out. But really, if you want to see that square happening, it's when they elect a new pope. Mm-hmm. And that's when people descend on Rome. It's the most important moment for, for the, the transition as the cardinals go into the Sistine Chapel in the conclave and elect a new pope. I don't that's know what, the, when that's, that what is, do you think the actual number that the square itself can hold? I mean, they, they're packed and they stay there because, you know, obviously they blow smoke out the top and the color, it's either black smoke or white smoke, and they're waiting for the white smoke. To say that, say they've, that they've elected elected a yeah. new pope, and sometimes it's they haven't got the majority or whatever. I don't even know what the number is for what t- what it takes to get. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, it has to be everybody. I don't think you. I don't think it has to be unanimous. I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> That's a great question. I, I don't have, know. We need to look that up. Seemed like it somebody w- can yeah, had go, to be go unanimous, do some do some searching there. All right. So the, what what was it about the square that you were like, whoa? Well, I, I, it was like when I thought I was like, was this built for like thousands of tourists to come in? Because that's what it seemed like. It was it was like it's amazing. It's not it was, for the tourists. It's oh, it's for not the faithful. I, yeah. I, okay. What you got? Two thirds supremacy vote by the cardinals. Two thirds supremacy vote. Okay. Like the See if you can look up how many people <laughs> might fit in the in the uh, in the in the square there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I think my most jaw-dropping moment within Rome, uh, and I think this is one of the most common for people, is whenever we actually entered the main part of the Sistine Chapel, and you just kind of look up and you see how high up the ceiling is, and you see the creation of Adam and creation of Eve and all the other just crazy paintings, um, and how three-dimensional they look, um, and how really lifelike. It's just truly amazing, and how, uh, how much historical significance is uh, within those. Um, it was just really kind of a crazy moment to just stand there for a good 20 minutes with your, your head cranked at 90 degrees, <laughs> um, just looking at those and realizing that Michelangelo was up there painting those um, however many hundreds of years ago. Um, it's yeah, just absolutely years. crazy. Yeah, give me the number real quick. So 300,000 people in St. Peter's uh, Square. 300,000 people in the square. And 15,000 in the church. Whoa. I mean, it is a big space. Wow. wow. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Say your name so we'll have this on record. Okay. I'm Riley and my Riley who? Or Riley there you or. Go. Make your daddy proud. All right, go. <laughs> my, my jaw-dropping moment was like, obviously, the Sistine Chapel altar wall and ceiling were amazing. I mean, that's just insane. And St. Peter's Basilica was insane, too. But for me today, it was Claire and I standing in, like some, in a certain spot in the Coliseum. And the tour director told us that, like, that was where the emperor had sat. And Claire was like, you realize, like, we're right here. And I just kind of looked around. I was like, ah, you know what? You're right. I don't know. That was really cool to think it, about. So that part hit you pretty hard. Yeah, pretty it well. hit me pretty hard. Just, like, how many, like, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people have been in that place. And, like, we were just standing there. Yep. Yeah. I had the first time I walked into the Coliseum, the and, it, and, it, and I do it. I've been there three times now. And, and so I have this moment every time. But I... But uh, it's when we first walk through the gate, when we enter that first lower level, and I always look up and watch the, you know, watch it kind of pass over me as I'm passing under it, you know that. And I, I think how many people, how many people that was their last view of the outside world, 
how many people went through that gate but never came back out again? Or, or yeah. you're saying, but I know, and I know that's for the crowds. But I know, but there are gates that and gladiators and other and other people went through. We uh, we looked up the total like de- like estimated deaths of the gladiators, and I think we came up with four hundred thousand was the estimated amount mm. of or estimated number of deaths. So that's yeah. kind of crazy. It's a it's it's a it's just a it's a heady experience. The whole thing is okay. Yes. Um, right, my, so again, I'm say your name first. Claire Graham. There you go. And I think mine, it's not as like eventful, but when we were in the Vatican and we saw uh, School of Athens, oh, we saw School of Athens. Uh-huh. That one was crazy just because we studied it so much, like in your class in our mm-hmm. history, and we were so close to it. Like it was like actually, because I've seen that, I feel like we've all seen that picture like thousands of times. Like it's a, like such a famous one. And then our what, tour director. What, so it stood out to you mostly because it's big because and so close? Because it was so big and like just because. Yeah, it was so, like, you never realize, like, how much detail is in it until you're, like, that close. And we were so, like, close to it. I didn't think we were going to be able to be, like, mm-hmm. just, like, right in front of you. Because it's, like, in such a small room. I don't know. That was right. crazy. It is a pretty tight space, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Right. I was upset because our tour director did not point out the School of Athens to us. So I never even got to see it. Oh, so oh, that's right. Yeah. So part of the group didn't get to see no, it. No, yeah. So we left, and I was like, well, crap. We didn't even get to because uh, I was looking forward to that because I was in APR history last year, right? And I was like, "Well, what the heck? Yeah, that's kind of sucked." Yeah, we didn't. I actually talked to our tour director before and said, oh, "We're to make sure we we're going to see it," and she said, "We can't." Really? Yeah, and tell me we couldn't, but somehow their group did. I okay. So I yesterday was my uh, birthday, and so yeah, Franklin New Year, and so I um, the the our tour lady, I was like. Hey, I kind of I pulled the birthday card. Is what I did actually. Told her it was my birthday. And, she, <laughs> and so she was like, "I'll make a special effort." And I was like, "Oh, please!" I, you know, I was I was I really like over exaggerated, and I really was thankful. I wasn't like I wasn't I wasn't kissing her, but but I kind of was too at the same time. You know, like I, if you would do this, that would be super great. I would be so grateful. And she did. She she like. We knocked yeah, around and got in there. she was very enthusiastic about your work. And she was very, yeah, yeah, I think we connected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, kind of like Claire said for, well, this is another thing Claire pointed out, is when we were leaving the, when we were leaving the Sistine Chapel and we were kind of exiting that room, the doorways are real small. Like Brazos had to bend his head to leave. And, and Claire looked up and she's like, he was right there painting it right above the door. And I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> you're so, like when you're, oh, <laughs> When you're walking out, you're so close to like you could touch it. Like mm. we obviously we didn't because that's like so disrespectful. Yeah, you don't, you don't touch it. Yeah. But like you're so I don't think you I didn't realize until like I was like walking right under that like doorway and I was like wow like we're so close to like it's still like I don't even know how to explain it. It's still like the color like it's still like uh-huh. still all there. I don't know. It was crazy. But. Yeah, that's another thing about these trips too, and and not just this one, but you know since this is the one we're on, this is the one we're talking about, just to be as close to these things as what you've read about or you've seen about, you've heard people talk about, you've seen it in movies, whatever, you know, and now here you are too. And so you're part of that history now as well. And that's, there's just something extra special about that. Go ahead, Josh. I want to mention something else about the doors. I okay. clear every door with one inch to spare. <laughs> I am perfect sized. You're all freaks. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Okay. So say your name. Okay. I'm Brazos Brooks. And I was telling Mr. Franklin this earlier, but I think one of my, like, jaw-dropping moments is, like, you know, we were walking to the Coliseum, and it, she was telling us all about it, and that was really cool and all. But right as we were about to leave, I was just, like, making my final, like, looks at it, just getting my final images in my head. And for whatever reason, I just felt like I couldn't look away because it was just so real, all of a sudden you know what i mean mm-hmm. and we we're about to walk away and i was like oh my gosh like this may be the only time ever that i get to see this and it's just so like so real and it i don't know you something about the, you it you didn't want to let it go no i didn't like i yeah. really struggled to turn around and walk away I was, even as we were walking out i kept on like making double takes but right. yeah yeah that's special though i mean it really is uh okay so let's uh did we get everybody that wanted to okay yep here go one Okay, again, say your name. My name is Andrew Soya, and I would say my most dro- dropping moment during the trip so far has been um, during the Vatican Museum. Mm-hmm. Did not anything specifically, just the amount that they have in, like... Th- just, those boys have collected some yeah, stuff, yeah. They were talking about... The <laughs> tour guide was like, there's like 7,000 artifacts, and they could only fit 5,000 or... Yeah, but only a few of them were on display, yeah. and yeah, I mean, ultimately. <laughs> and, like... I just felt so overwhelmed, but like it was just so interesting seeing everything from almost all of the past that we can backtrack for sure, the most part sure. of it through art history, at least. And 
I don't know. I, that was just <laughs> overwhelming. Yeah, well, I think that's a great word to use for the entire trip, you know, and partly, and, and it would be different if we had, you know, it was a summertime trip and we were here for a month and we could take our time really, but it, it, so we are fairly, we're walking through it fairly quickly and, you know, this is going to be a momentary experience in this spot because we got to go into the next spot. And so, like I said, the, our goal is to give you as much as we can for the price that you've paid and so you can have this, and, but it is, in each spot, there's a there's something overwhelming that I've always tried to you know what what is it here that I can take with me, you know I don't want to take any of this for granted. What what in in this moment in this area in in this with this picture with this statue with this in this architectural space, just walk in the street sometimes too. I mean, hopefully you guys had some time where you could just sort of look around and get a feel for what the cities have been like. You know, I can't hear you on them. There you go. Yeah. Just walking around the real Roman streets being told, yeah, 2,000 years ago they were making these, and all of a sudden you're on a paved road that was made a month ago. It's <laughs> yeah, just the, integrated yeah, So the that blending easily. of old and new, mm. right? Yeah, part of the jaw-dropping experience is kind of putting aside the fatigue and the busyness and the, the cars and, the, and really trying to put yourself thinking about what you're seeing, like really being in the moment. We were in the St. Peter's yesterday, me and my wife, and, you know, we, we did our tour, and we've been there several times, but we were leaving – and there was the Pieta on our left as we were leaving. And I said, I just grabbed her. I said, hey, just let's just take a second. This could be the last time we see it. You never know. And it's one of our favorite statues. And so we just kind of took it in for a moment. And, you know, that's special, right? We don't get this history stuff at home very much because our country's so young. Yet me and him, we spend a lot of our lives thinking about the past. So to see it in front of us, you know, Italy was the first country I visited. Uh, when I first started doing this 20 years ago. And when students asked me, what's the favorite, your favorite thing you've ever seen? You started taking trips when you were six? 20 years ago? <laughs> yes. He's a, he's a young one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can fool them. Um, but when I started, uh, my first, first day, just like us, it was Vatican, it was Sistine Chapel. And to this day, when students go, what was the most, the biggest thing you've seen? I always have a tendency to say Sistine Chapel because it was the first thing. And I, I have a feeling if this is your first time to Europe, you might come back several times. I think this trip is going to be special. That first time that you see one of those historic things that you've heard about, you've seen in books, it's, it's hard to replace that. For some reason, I've seen the Eiffel Tower. I've went all over now. But that's just thing, that first time I looked up and saw it, you know, that – for whatever, I, there's something about that that's special. And, and I want y'all to have as many of those moments on I, this trip as I well. do encourage you to do that. And I know it's, it's sometimes we look through life through a viewfinder. You know, we, we, it's through our cameras, through our phone or whatever. But try to, and, and take your pictures because you do want to cherish those and be able to look at them again later and share them. But do just stop for a second and put that device down and just look at what's in front of you. Look around you, get a sense of it, right? Don't just, don't just, don't just stand there, be there. Yeah, I think that's gonna. And I, from what you guys have been saying, I think that you've been doing that, right? It's everybody's had some some kind of experience that's hit them in some way, and you're going to continue to have that. Like we're we're just we're just sort of scratching the surface. Up. Yeah, so it's today, uh, tomorrow in Florence is going to be uh, pretty spectacular too. It, I mean, it's just different, right? Each city's going to be different. Um, what do you guys think of uh, Orvieto? Orvieto. Oh my gosh! The, okay, so the, the view. Let's was describe worth it first, so people who don't know what it is, like just like the viewer when we sh- showed up there. Mm-hmm. Which one? I guess well, the, what, like what? What? When we went to the place, like what did you see? Like what is it? Well, I looked up and I was like, "Hmm, this is an actual Italian place and not the <laughs> mega city of Rome." And this it's is, a fortress. This is what, yeah, I was like, "This is what so I thought like all of Italy was." Maybe in a weird, in a it way, it was very authentic because like, it's more rural. Mm-hmm, and the wildcat, two of them actually. Oh, okay. So uh, go ahead. Evan, well, uh, the, the describe, main, describe. Okay, so yes. just the the visual aspects of Orvieto. Um, it's up on a big, I guess, hill, um, almost mountain, I guess. Uh, it's a big fortress. We had to take uh, some sort of ski, li- uh, ski lift-like thing to get up there. Um, and then within it, there is uh, like a population half the size of Hot Springs. Um, and it is very different than Rome. Uh, Rome uh, is very, I compared it to New York earlier. Uh, it's very New York-like, very tourist trappy in some ways. Um, this felt very authentic. This felt like people were just living their lives that they uh, had been living for the past however long they've lived there. Um, and just the normalcy of it and just viewing the culture uh, has been the best experience I've had here. I so don't want to say quaint because that sounds disingenuous mm. and maybe a little 
uh, egotistical on my part. Mm. You know, it's so quaint. Right? <laughs> but no, but I mean, but there's a, a, a wholesomeness to it, it is, that yes. I felt that's, and it's a very, again, Rome's hustle, bustle, people yeah, are moving, in, you know, big crowds. And here it was just like, well, that's exactly right. Because in Rome, people pace. are very, people are very rude. Um, they, because uh, well, okay, everybody's me, skeptical. They they don't want to. They're on edge. Well, but let let me sort of clarify yeah, that because yeah. it's 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 we we take it maybe as rude. Where mm. in for them it's just direct. Yes, right. Yeah. They're very much. We I got to go from here to here. There are these many people in the way. I'm just yeah. sort of you know you sort of work your way through it. And I don't. So I don't think it's like. I don't think they're intentionally trying to be rude. But no, it is definitely but different from Rome to Orvieto. That's okay. People so, were, right, we just want to clarify that. But. People were nicer. Like my friends, they went and ate at a restaurant where the um, people who owned it did not speak English at all, and they just talked through the through the uh, Google Translate. And at the end of it, they got a group photo together, uh, and because uh, the dude fixed him his favorite meal. Oh, great! Um, and it was just really kind of a cool experience. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the view. And actually, just standing on top of the fortress and looking down at all of the stuff in the valley. Mm-hmm. That view has I can I can definitively say that it's the best view I've ever seen in my life. That was absolutely beautiful. That was just it was a nice time of day to be there. Too. It, was it was very nice. No day. clouds in the sky, no wind. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the mic. It, it was what they call siesta, where everybody kind of goes home for a few hours, <laughs> sleeps, says whatever. Yeah, and so there's like nobody there. It felt we were there for two hours, and I felt like I was there for ten. There's like this how cool easy beauty going to that it was. though. You know, they're just like you know what, we're all gonna go home for a while. You know, we'll be back. Just hang out, be cool, and then uh, yeah, that's a different pace. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I I kind of respect that though. <laughs> we don't do that. You know. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to say yeah, I, I do think I think the in Spain they do the same thing where they take a break in the middle of the day, and I don't know. It, it's just something what that I wish we could you know import over to the states um, in some aspect because you know just to be able to take it more slow. All right, on on that on that track. Do you guys, as young Americans, feel like you never get a chance to unplug? Yes. yes. Does yes. that stand out to you more now than it did yesterday? But that's what I'm saying. But now that we've been there, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, this sort of, I mean, uh, you know, not to get political, but this is something that I do care about. Um, you know, I, I, w- I would like to see a world, a world where, you know, we're a lot more just chill and not so fast paced in america we really want everything right away and you know that's something that i'm not really cool with but um yeah no it's it's such an eye opener we just, we you know. are some of the most impatient people i mean really i i and i've caught myself being this too I'll, i will tell on myself for a second i have stood in front of a microwave irritated that it's <laughs> taking too long like bro the, like i am booking myself way too tight if I don't have three seconds to heat up a pop tart, you know, in a microwave. <laughs> all, right. all right, yeah. So, all right. So, say say your name. And oh, okay. Then so go. I'm Ella. Um, one thing I noticed about the impatient thing when we were in um that town or Orvieta, mm-hmm. um, me and my mom we went to like a little bar slash diner to get food. Okay. And um, it took a while, and we were confused at first. Um, but the guy, like, the owner, or what, whoever was working there, his friends came in and mid order they just sat down and had a had a cup of coffee together and stuff and it was so normal and my mom was really confused and i was like i, I assume like if you're this little little town owner owning a diner and your friends come in you're gonna pause instead yeah. of wait for some tourists and i thought that was just fascinating pair with like the nap time basically and all that yeah. i wish like it was more like that in america uh, again also with the lack of fast food you like you when you're eating you sit down and you're gonna wait and it's like an ex- it's more it's much more enjoyable that way because it's mm. not just get it and go Right. I mean, like the people, they're they're socializing. They're they're doing more than just their job, and I feel like it makes life so much more enjoyable. I can, you know, I kind of since you guys have brought that up, I kind of think about that with the traffic patterns. Have you noticed this? Oh like the uh, Americans would be shooting at each other oh because there's like you know we, we're so we're, we're we drive so aggressively and we get mad at each other for the slightest little thing, and here they're just like. I mean, they maybe they honk at each other, but it's more like hey, hey, and then you go on about your thing, and they weave in and out, and the and the, and the lanes don't really matter, and the the lights might or might not matter, and they sometimes they bump each other, but they don't seem to get mad about it. It all just kind of works. We there's we would not function that way. Yeah. Everybody would be calling their lawyers and taking pictures, you know, and tow trucks everywhere. But they're just like, hey, it's just part of life. Yeah, you know? I don't think they would have to be shooting each other because the it, I don't know what it is, but everybody here can just drive fantastically. <laughs> With, it's so. It's 
amazing. It's yeah. so chaotic. <laughs> it's so good. If, 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 if this was a system in the United States, there would be wrecks every it's, like. I'm saying it seems chaotic and we would jam it's up insane. and never get anything done. Our bus drivers are the best drivers I've ever seen in my oh. life. They're, they're cranking these 90 degree turns <laughs> with these giant buses. It's like, I would like to see them on the racetrack and see what they can actually do because they, they have some talent. It's crazy. They'll swing those buses and miss something else by inches. Yes, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's beautifully done. <laughs> There's an art to it. Yeah. Can go ahead. We, uh, can oh, we, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Link. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick yeah, jump in. joke. Yeah, go. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, can, yeah. Uh, can we can we go see like a rally race or like, uh, <laughs> is there any time we can go do that? That'd be fun. No, yeah. No, yeah, 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 it's yeah basically, it's a wind. rally race. Yeah. All right, go. Yeah, going back to your original question, it, like, Orvieto has made me realize how far like Christianity has sped throughout Europe because we went to the top and there was just like a church out of nowhere. I was like, what? What? Where did yeah. this even come from? Like that. It, okay, so that was our first time there too, and I knew there was a cathedral there. That's what they said. Oh, there's a cathedral. I didn't know it was that. Like it's gigantic. <laughs> yeah, you're going down these quaint it's, streets, and then yeah, what just happened? There's and these tight little narrow almost alleyways, and it? you know, and then all of a sudden it oh, just wow. opens up on the very top. Area. Huh? I, I I think uh, Chris or somebody told us that um, Raphael uh, did some sort of art in there as well. Oh, I didn't. I, okay, I didn't. Ca- I don't yeah. know the history of the thing. Yeah, so, I, okay. I don't really know for sure, but but it's it was magnificent, and especially the the time of day we were there, and the way the sun angle was hitting that, all the the uh, the gold leaf on those mosaics on the front. And so was that real gold? Probably. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Steph said one, the bus two tour guide said if it looks gold, it is gold. Okay. Ah, there you go. Yeah, so sense. yeah. And it was, and it you was can also shiny. see how well it was built in the 1270s. Um, you can see how well protected it's been over the centuries. And when you stand at the top of the, the castle wall, you can see, oh, wow, it would be very difficult to attack the city yeah. because you got a good sense of what these Italian city states were like spread out on the Italian peninsula and just these fortresses with these castle walls. I had a, a moment at the top of that looking around going, okay, I could see cannonballs coming. <laughs> But I, I can't imagine anyone taking this place without losing thousands of people. What that also speaks to me, though, is like the, the complicated history of the of just the of Italy, you know, because we think about it as this United Peninsula. But for a lot of its history, it was just these smaller city states or, or towns that were maybe going after each other. And I've said this in multiple classes, like you don't build big walls unless you're trying to protect yourself from something serious. And these boys are they've built this town on top of a mountain and then it's fortified on top of that with with medieval style battlements. I, that's a very I mean, obviously there was something dangerous around them or they wouldn't have felt the need to do that you know yeah. I mean the view's beautiful but other than that it's also like a fortified view right where they protected that town and you can tell yeah and it, obviously it's worked you know mm-hmm. so but yeah they, they've 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 had a they've had a messy history you know all right what else for uh, what else for today or whatever you guys have seen just jump in we can go back to Rome. We can talk, think about uh, or any any part of the last couple of days. This isn't like necessarily like a jaw dropping experience, but I just it just caught my attention. But when there was that performance at the Pantheon, mm-hmm. um, it was almost like it wasn't weird to me because I know that for them, that's probably this is like a normal thing that happens. Obviously, there's, I'm sure there's tons of performances that happen in front of the Pantheon, mm-hmm. but just knowing how monumental that place is and how like important it is to history and stuff and just seeing like all like the light shining on it it was just really interesting to me you know what i mean it was really cool don't get me wrong but like i was like whoa and like i said that's probably normal to them just because you know we just happened to stumble upon that too right it's kind of neat that we saw it we didn't know they were going to do that either yeah talk uh, talk about a clash of modern and antiquity (laughs) all coming together in this which i guess is the point that this is all really about because you have these ancient especially in rome these ancient things right four thousand year old city and then you have all this modernity around it as well, yeah. right? So to, to, for it to coexist like that's pretty, pretty cool and special. And they're always, you know, they're looking to preserve it too. Yeah. And that was something our tour guide said today at the Coliseum that I had really sort of, I knew, but I sort of forgot that I knew, is how the building had been abandoned for a long time and, and they just didn't, they didn't care for it. They didn't care about it. They didn't try to protect it because it was just this old eyesore and it needed to be, right? They well, were like, that, hey, take pieces of here and there. They, they also used the Coliseum as like a quarry for resources mm-hmm. and that's just like, I didn't that's know terrible. That, but I had forgotten that they just didn't like it enough to yeah. worry about whether well, or not it I had, I had down. No, or, I had no clue why it was so like, I guess decrepit or just demolished, but to just, you know, strip it of its beauty and all of its resources just to, you know, put them somewhere else, that's just terrible to It me. turned into a resource. Yeah, exactly. It was just a quarry. It was a resource field. It's, it's awful. 
mean, that's part of the reason why it looks the way it does yes, too. Because yeah. once you take all those binding metals and uh, all of the all of the things that held, you know, sort of glued it together, if you will, then w- when the earthquake started happening, mm. then the series of collapses took place. And you and I talked about that a little bit before we left. Then, mm. all right, what else? What you got? I was going to talk, talk about the traffic again. Okay. They all drive so well because their car is like two feet long. <laughs> if you brought TJ's Hummer from Lakeside, <laughs> he would get in 18 yeah, wrecks have, in the yeah, first hour. Yeah, you notice that all of the vehicles are like really compact. Yes. Yeah. No pickup trucks, no, no dualies, mm. no lift kits. I want to drive like, like a full-size semi and just see what happens. <laughs> you can, apparently, it's, you, know, you can make a hell of a living as a bus driver here. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, those yeah. some of the biggest vehicles on the roads. Yeah, that's something we take for granted. These cities were not built with cars in mind, with roads, with traffic lights. They were built and trying to be reshaped for a modern world. Yeah, mostly pedestrian for a lot of their history, yeah. you know. I mean, you walked on the paying way going, going down to the Roman Forum. Like, Rome became what it was because of one thing, roads. They built roads. Mm. And it helped, I mean, it it created an empire, really. Nobody else did that. Just like the British built their empire because of their navy. Well, Rome had roads, and you walked on them, and you're thinking, man, this thing is hard to walk on. But that technology of a a level-graded road was everything because... I mean, that's transportation. Yeah, when they were new, they were perfectly smooth, too. Right. Yeah. So what you saw today was really just, I mean, really uh, a, a core of what it used to be. Perfectly. I think, I think it's wild that they're even just still there. Right. After all these thousands of years, that they're still there for us to walk on well, and drive they've, on. They've been excavated, though, too. You know, So there's, there's been that preservation attempt okay. in that modern day because so long. But if you, you get a chance there, to go to Pompeii, floods, yeah. you'll see mm. what it was more like uh, because... And, and that maybe maybe we'll come back here in a few years and go to Pompeii again, because that you know maybe I'm planting the bug in some of y'all to come back to Europe and see more of this stuff because that city shows you what Rome might have been more like with the the marbled mm. streets and the there's, yeah there's much more left in spite of the catastrophe you know if you, have you guys realized that the roads are super smooth because I almost slipped and died several times today <laughs> I step on a rock and yeah, you, walked on so much I'm like mm, I almost died right there just slipped <laughs> they've been. Uh, They've been walked on so much, right? They've mm-hmm. just been ground smooth. Uh, just on kind of a side note, I am very afraid to go back to Hot Springs after seeing, you know, like within two days, seeing the, you know, the <laughs> Sistine Chapel, the it's just everything, all the amazing, fa- like famous things we've seen. Going back to Hot Springs and our main attraction being Oaklawn and the bathhouses. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I'm very worried. Well, this is something Kevin mentioned too. He's like, we're we're a, we're a little baby country compared to the the long histories that we're that we're dealing with now. Yeah. So you know we've we've come pretty far pretty fast, but at the same time, we uh, we we don't have anything that compares with it. We really don't. And so that was one of the mis- mystiques of America, though, when we started to build who we were, is that nature was our cathedral. Nature was yeah. what we found. You know, all of the the westward migrations and all that. So, but here they're like, yeah, yeah, that's cute. Look what we did. Look what we built. You know. So, but okay. So all, okay. So this is to all of you that are sitting here. Do you think that you will? And I know we're we're just a couple of days in. And maybe I'll ask you this a question towards the end again. Uh, do you feel that you will go home and be a different person to yes. some degree? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So what? And if so, if you if you feel that you can answer that right now, like what might that be? Because that what you just said made me think about that. Go ahead, Liam. I cannot answer that right no, now. No, no, that's my, fine. My just brain yeah, is whatever, scrambled. Think, you ponder <laughs> that for a second. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just kind of seeing uh, all these sites. You know, the Sistine Chapel, the uh, Saint. Peter's Basilica, all the crazy things. Um, it, it's different than seeing them in a book, in a movie, TV show, or learning about them in class, obviously. You're standing where these famous historical figures have been. Um, and I, I think the biggest kind of, uh, I, I don't want to say revelation, but um, just kind of thought that I've had while being here is I've had such a hard time believing that I'm actually here and not just in some <laughs> some place in the United States. I'm actually like halfway across the world from where I live and I'm in these Are famous you afraid you're going to wake places. up and not really be here? Yeah, and so having been a part of this, I I feel like I've just I don't I don't really know. <laughs> it's hard to process and I'm still processing sure, all of it. Sure. It's only our second day. Um but I just seeing things like the view from uh Orvieto um and just the, the sheer beauty of everything has really kind of changed. You me. guys on this trip are going to have a shared experience and you're going to go home and have and I think this is something you've said before, Kevin, that you're, you're going to have private jokes that no one else will get. You're going to have stories that no one else is going to know. You've seen things that people in your life will maybe never, ever really see or experience the way that you have. 
And, uh, and that's the beautiful part of these travels. That's why we keep doing this, honestly. Like, we've been here, and, and we do learn. We continue to learn. But, you know, we've seen a lot of it, and so we can kind of see other things. But to watch you guys see it and to, and to really absorb this moment and become like, you go, wow. And, and this is, these are experiences that no one can ever, ever take away from you, right? Like, this is, these are yours, and, and I think that helps us cherish the experience maybe even more. Go ahead, okay, so something that's changed me, yet I also realized it, um, just throughout, um, like, just throughout the entire Rome experience, Speak up um, just a little bit for okay. me, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> was um, like artwork and how it's almost like decreased with like. Uh, oh, you mean like mod- the, modern? Yeah. Okay. Like modern artwork. I feel like almost anybody can do. I through an art school, like if you go through three years of art school, you can do most art that's made today. But like, do you feel what, like the digital as, as brilliant as digital art is? Do you think that that's kind of taking I, some of the. If I'm catching what you're yeah. saying, it's taking some of the quality away. Yeah, and I just what they were able to do with the shading and almost the limited limited materials that they had, mm-hmm. it's just so magnificent. That is something we talk about yeah. in our history. How they, you know, if you want to become an artist, you can get your digital program, you can get the right kind of equipment, or you can go down to the to the stores and you know you can get ready made paints and things in tubes. And here are the brushes. These boys made all of that stuff, or they didn't have it. You know, they had teams of people who helped them sometimes. They had studios worth of people who were working for them to help create paints and to, and to make canvases and to give them the time to be the creative geniuses that we were. They, there's a support staff for a lot of these guys, except for Michelangelo, I think. He did a lot of his stuff by himself. But anyway, that's, uh, I, I could be wrong about that, too. But go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I know. You're good. Um, I was just, I mean, think about, like, New York art galleries. Like, they're not even more people-based anymore. They're just abstract not thrown together art because of course it's still you can always usually find meaning behind it but it's just almost not as thought through and not people don't take as much time on are it as you they going to take the art history class probably? because we discussed this yeah. very thing <laughs> yeah yeah. I was, I was like, <laughs> yeah so yeah. but but I, I i get what you're saying and it's it's something that that art artisans and art historians sort of debate and argue you know is this is it this? Is it the same quality? Is it, you know, is it the, the, the purposefulness of it? Whatever. So yeah, it, it is. But it's definitely different, right? We can judge. And we can sometimes make judgments for ourselves whether we think that's better or not. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. <coughs> um, this was kind of back what like Evan was saying, but the whole like it doesn't feel like you're really here. Like I know multiple times where like me, Riley, and then our friend Olivia, like we're just like walking around in Rome or in Orvieto, and we're just like this feels like a movie set. Like this does not feel like his. It's like yeah, like Epcot. Like it's like you're in Disneyland. Cause it's like you turn yeah. and you're just like this is what like so many like replicas are made of. But I don't think we have like enough time to like really process and be like. Wow. You know what like, I think part of that no, is like, because really in America <laughs> we have some of the older quote unquote <laughs> things that we have. You know, you go to visit Jamestown or whatever, and you have people who are acting the part. Mm-hmm. These people are just no, living the part, you know, like and maybe the heritage has been here th- for hundreds of years. They just kind of live the same kind of lifestyle. And then today on the bus, like me, Andrew and Brazos, we were like just sitting there. We were like, we're driving through like old, like old, old like older Italy. And we're just like this. There's just random castles like everywhere. <laughs> and we're like, this is like just crazy that it's just like random towns and castles. And yeah, I don't know. And then I think to go back to to go back to America, I think. Like, with me, like, being in Orvieto, I feel like it just felt like they just lived such a, not, like, a simpler life, but nothing. I don't want, yeah, yeah, I don't want to sound dismissive. Nothing's, yeah. like, rushed. Like, they're, and not, mm. like, America is very, like, I f- I'd feel, like, materialistic. Like, you work for money. Like, you work every day to just to make more money and, like, be higher and more successful. But, like, here, it's, like, they just, I don't know, they just, like, live. They just, like, they have their little shops and they go home and they take a nap. And it's just, it's such a, it's more simple. And well, that's not like, nothing's wrong with that, obviously. Well, yeah, it's just, like, I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is, yeah. right? But I will say this, just again, to reemphasize the point, you'll go home with a sort of a different appreciation of who we are too, or what we could be, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe your life will be more, um, maybe, maybe you will push to live a life differently than you had maybe thought before based on some of the things that you've seen and experienced, which is another reason why we travel. You want it to be a, a personal learning experience too, right? Not just see things, but experience. Right, jump. So you're talking about what like made this feel real. Mm-hmm. It was at the Coliseum, and our tour guide was like, "Yeah, they built this. We think eight thousand slaves died." And I'm like, "Hmm." <laughs> they, I thought it was just like they built it, and everybody was fine, and it was all good. It's like, no, eight thousand people died making this two thousand year old building I'm standing it's in. Dangerous uh, activity. Just to, yeah, and they they pulled that thing together in eight years. 
that is some serious planning and execution. No pun intended. And also, also <laughs> seeing the the super worn stairs that they'd like gated off because they're too dangerous to walk on. Sure, it was cool because they're still marble and whatever other stone she yeah. was talking about. Yeah, it's yeah. I, it, there are rumors, and I don't know how true they are, but I, th- I think there is some there are, there are some preservation efforts underway, and I've heard that they're going to try to like redo at least a section of it so you kind of maybe bring this piece of it back to its former glory so you can kind of oh you can better visualize it maybe so we'll see we'll see what they can get done they've done quite a bit since the first time i was here yeah so i go um kind of going back to what you were saying about changing when we go back home um i know for um me my friend claire my friend olivia and our friend julia who wanted to come but she couldn't unfortunately um we have all already talked about wanting to move to new york together and experience just kind of like different like ways of life different cultures you know Mm -hmm. and um and so, like, after this trip, I think we all agreed that we also want to come try, you know, like, different parts of Europe, different parts of, you know, Asia. Like, just kind of travel the world while we're still young mm-hmm. and just kind of experience different cultures while we still can. And this trip has just been so, like, like just seeing different different things, different languages people speak. It's just so cool. Like, we just, we become, like, in, like we want to experience it all. Our, our tour guide, uh, Chris, said something. He traveled a ton when he was young. He's slowing down now. He's married. But when you get old... You will never regret traveling too much. You might regret not spending as enough time with your family or et cetera. But while, when you're young and you can, yes, every country is a book from a library. Open it up, see what's in it. And that doesn't mean where we live is worse. You know, I, I want to make sure that we don't no, just yeah, that's not- build... Italy up to this perfect, you know, and we're utopia. You're actually gonna, you're gonna miss some things about us. And when we go home, you'll be like, oh yeah, I do like this about America. (laughs) You know, I always go home going, yeah, I can, I like this part. We should teach them about free refills or whatever, you know, (laughs) the stuff that we enjoy, our conveniences, but, but still to experience it. It'll make you appreciate everything, I think, a bit more. Yeah, I think you'll get home and see home differently too. Yeah. Now, maybe, you know, like this is, Maybe that's something I missed before that now I like that reminds me of something I saw here that I really liked and now now I have discovered that it was here near me too in some way, you know. So anyway, have you done that? Have you seen a little apartment or something like, you know? Just imagine if you were born there and that was your life and this was your little restaurant and if you grew up here, you know that you you'd be so different. And I think it's it's important to think of yourself as some, maybe somebody else to make you more empathetic to other people, other cultures, you know. So that's why I travel anyway. So uh, going back home, I realized that I need to appreciate two things much more. The first being views. I uh, like looking at, you know, like if I'm going to buy a house and like I don't understand. I never truly understood why like the price went up because of the view. I was like, what? Is, what? That doesn't even include in the house. Like that doesn't make sense to me. But you know, after going to Orvieto and going to Rome, and I was like, okay, well, I was totally wrong. I I need to learn to appreciate this thirty times more. Like it's it's actually it's I, I understand why a house would cost like thousands more just because we have some i mean there are spectacular views here and they're sort of spectacular to us because they're sort of new in a way right this the way that they're the the landscape is a little different but at the same time going back to what you said too about america there are things to appreciate about our country as well in our countryside if you travel the united states not just not by air not by plane i mean actually just get out and drive it my wife and i do a lot of travel we drive everywhere we go we've we've driven the country you know north south east west and round around and it's just, you know, you roll through different states and everyone has their own quality and you can feel it change as the, you know, so be a part of that landscape too. But yeah, yeah, that's Most exactly of you right live so. in a house that if a lot of these people saw, it's like, this is a mansion. This is way too big for a family of four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we, we do take for granted how large our country is. Mm, and when you come to Italy, everything is small. They don't have land. You know, it's not that that's the one thing that they, they they've got water. They've got some resources that, that are easily to get, but land is the one thing that... I think that's what I've heard from most difference. students that have been transfer students or exchange students to the United States. Well, what's, what's one of the things that has stood out to you, you know, well, since you've been here? And they go, your country is really large. Mm-hmm. You know, if, they, if they've gotten to see much of it at all. Just, it's so big and, you know, and we still have room to stretch and go. So, yeah. all right, you had something. Yes. Um, so before going on this trip, and one of the main reasons I went on this trip... Um, I've always wanted to, uh, you know, see the world because uh, I've never been outside of the U.S. The only two places I've really gone, like when we go on vacation as a family, is either New York or Florida. And as amazing as those places are, um, 
I, I would like to see more than that. And so that was one of the main reasons I signed up for this. Having now been here for two days, I think, um, <laughs> I want to do that even more. I w- I'm definitely going to be coming back to Italy. Um, I want to see more European countries. I want to go even further east. Um, during college, and no matter where I go, I'm definitely going to sign up for a study abroad program and you know stay a semester somewhere. Um, but this has definitely kind of added fuel to the fire of wanting to experience a new culture and experience a new surroundings. Um, and I think that's one of the you know there's so many cool things but one of the cool things about Italy um, is not just a difference in scenery but a difference in culture and a difference in language and how people act because um, you don't know if the people around you speak English you know a lot of people do uh, because English is a very common language but not all of them do and so um, you kind of have to adapt you might have to use Google Translate you might have to find somebody else who does uh, you know speak a few words Um, but I think that's just so freaking cool. <laughs> um, and just experiencing such a different environment than we're used to. Um, and, you know, actually just just, just experiencing is so amazing um, and learning from it and kind of, I guess, humbling because um, you're so used to just interacting with everybody around you. Oh, you know English. Everybody knows English. But coming here, it's like we are the foreigners. We are the outsiders. Uh, we're no longer looking at the other people as, you know, they um, like the people who do not speak English in the U.S. It's like, oh, they're the foreigners. And you kind of, you know, you look at them a little bit weird. Um, we are the ones being looked at, like filling up my water over there. Everybody at the table just stares at you, <laughs> just completely stares at you. It is it is the strangest feeling. You feel like you were on display, like at a zoo. Yeah, it, yeah, and we uh, getting just it's just, it's just so weird. We are like, was that was were you the guys that were at the wrong table or something? No, no. We went into a shop, and uh, the shopkeeper was talking to um, these four women who happened to be from Chicago, um, and we were just looking at some of the stuff and just while speaking to the women just completely transformed a sentence into speaking to us and we had no clue and he just kind of like got annoyed that we did not know we were he was talking to us Uh. he goes english (laughs) yeah i was like Uh. yeah yeah (laughs) um of course but yeah no it's just like we're seen as the outsiders we're seen as kind of i don't know if exotic is the right word but um it's just people view us differently um we we stand out those exotic americans (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna get a t-shirt yeah, part of the experience, though, is being uncomfortable, having those confrontations, learning how to figure it out, you know. Um, and everywhere you go, it's different. You know, we go to Paris and London next year. I mean, that's a great trip. You learn how to – you look at a metro map the first day, and it's gibberish. What in the world – by the end of the trip, you know how to get all over the, the city. You know, that's just one thing you learn, and uh, it would be similar here. You'll, you'll have this for the rest of your lives. You can say, I've been to Rome. Yeah, and you know where things are in proximity to other things, too, right? Like, you know how to get to the Forum from the Coliseum. Yeah. You, you know how to get from the Trevi Fountain to the Pantheon. Mm-hmm. If we say the Arch of Constantine is by the Coliseum, you know about how far that is now. Yeah, yeah. so spatial, di- mm-hmm. spatial awareness yes. is something, too, yeah. Yeah, and going back to Evan with culture, well, the second thing I didn't get to start, finish, sorry, but the second thing I learned to appreciate is, um, it's kind of different, but, like, clothing it's so different like they actually take time to they have style and i love it i love it i feel like such a slob (laughs) yeah no but they're like non-verbally patronizing us by just looking at us (laughs) right i mean it's a thing yeah no and and it's great the little kids i I know the little kids are so cool they make us look like they look look like we're pajamas but they don't look like Like, they're trying to be cool they just are Uh, you know i need that i mean it maybe maybe i hope I need to do better. <laughs> I need to try harder. <laughs> I like my t-shirts, though. I don't know. It's pretty comfortable. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we probably need to wrap up now. We are going to have another podcast, hopefully on a ferry headed to Greece. So that's probably the next time you will hear us. So with that, ciao. Ciao.